and change makers, I, I, I relish the opportunity. I'm just going to um, find my, I've prepared a, a few um, slides to guide myself. Um, I just want to make sure that you can, uh, you can see them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very Great. well. Great. Thank you. Let me go into my slideshow and okay, perfect. So um, thanks again. I, I've known Marcus and Zora um, quite a while now, and we are, I suppose, deepening, I suppose, the opportunities um, to to make change, I suppose, through uh, digital transformation. And I suppose this is very much a view from the cold face. It's, as I said, I'm not an academic. I, I work in industry, but also in policy. So I suppose this is a, a bit of a practical um, approach, but also I suppose from my own lived experience um, in, in working um, for the last 20 years, I suppose, in, in economic development, et cetera. So just a little bit more about me. Um, the company I founded is called Momentum Education to Innovate. We are vocational education trainers, so we, we would train about 600 um, mostly entrepreneurs, um, but also, uh, I suppose, in, in all types of applied innovation. Um, we would particularly focus also on um, hard to reach audiences, such as youth that have dropped out of education. And we develop really um, interesting projects. So, for example, one project would be... Um, Within the theme of entrepreneurship, we have a project called Epic, which is about using pop culture as a vehicle to get into um, entrepreneurship. So, you know, your uh, Game of Thrones um, visitor tour um, in Northern Ireland will be one example. And another one would be um, Street Food for Youth. So we've helped about 30 street food entrepreneurs, young people with, with challenged backgrounds, some from migrant backgrounds to set up um, their businesses. So we do, we, um, I suppose we apply what, what, what we um, learn, I suppose, over, over time. I'm far from a digitization expert. Marcus will can attest to that. But I suppose what, what I do and with my team is that we work to unlock the power of digitization for the benefit of SMEs. And thereafter, I suppose, and, and part of that is, is for uh, changing regions and, and improving our regions and, and making a big impact. Um, we're, we're quite unique in that we work across a spectrum a, a, a spectrum, I suppose, and we work from policymakers at the top national and EU level right down to micro enterprises in rural Ireland. So I suppose we, I very much see us as, as being on the ground and, and, and we're digging half the time to try and, you know, um, make progress. But yeah, we, 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 we are an applied, quite, we take quite a, an informal approach to make greater impact. And I suppose that's just the style and culture of the organisation. Um, so obviously COVID is such a such a game changer in this whole area. Um, and I suppose the harsh reality um, emanating from COVID is that there were entire sectors exposed with little or no digis, digital business models. So for example, the restaurant sector, the retail sector. I'm going to give you some examples of, 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 of the impact and what the pivoting that has happened, I suppose, through digitization and the power of digitization to, to, to help change. For me, this whole area is not about the technology. Yes, we have, that's why we have amazing people in places like IVI and Nero and, you know, Manuth, absolutely, um, you know, um, really, really strong in terms of technical knowledge. But for me, it's no good just being in, in a research center or an innovation hub. It needs, it's about the technology. Um, being applied. So it's the skill base and the market knowledge to use the technology and to do that quickly, um, particularly in, in a COVID situation. I'm going to talk some to, through some examples. And at the moment, I mean, it's a harsh reality is that those businesses that don't embrace, um, you know, digitization are and react, you know, it is it is a, a fairly um, fatal situation for those businesses. And we will see hordes of companies not reopening, it's hordes of businesses not reopening post-COVID, particularly in hospitality. And certain sectors have been poorer at digitization than others. So um, it's, you know, it is, a, it is what it is. So it was just for me, I suppose the implications are not like it's, you know, ready or not, here we come. We have We've seen a huge acceleration in the number numbers of businesses that have digitized some of some or all of their operations in 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 the last since last uh, March or April, and we're not finished. We're only beginning. Um, 
so what does digitization or digital transformation look like? Um, myself and Marcus and Zora would, would, would fondly work on a number of uh, food sector projects that are, I suppose, using the power of digital transformation to, to make a difference. But one example, an amazing example, is the Hanson Burger, Ireland's award, award-winning burger based out of Galway. Um, two guys moved home from London, um, saw an opportunity, set up a street food business and um, now have um, a number of outlets and franchises in, in the west of Ireland. Um, obviously, their business was, was decimated overnight and they have now, um, I suppose, uh, pivoted to sell a the ultimate, bur- oh, sorry, the ultimate burger making um, kit that will arrive to your house. I was on their website this morning. I'm just going to, tr- oh no, um, just want to see. Um, can you see the um, website there? Yeah. Um, but you will see that the um, that that they're sold out. You know, this is every week. You cannot get um, get get a, a kit to make um, a handsome burger in your home now. If you're lover money and corporates are sending them. I, I know that the SAP in Galway sent over two thousand. Um, people this pack to have a, a, a joint cook off on on a, on, a, on a Friday afternoon so it just gives you an example of of, of you know a business that has moved from being a, a fixed restaurant business to being an online business um, okay um, digital transformation, Another area, I suppose, that, that we're looking at is, and it's very close to home, it's, there's a trial ongoing in Oran Moor at the moment, is, is the MANA drone delivery service that has been set up, um, I suppose, in, in recent times. It's, you know, promising a three-minute air delivery to make it a reality, whether it be food or medicine. Um, in Oran Moor, in their trials, they've delivered eggs, they've delivered coffees, um, and they've, you know... Uh, really I suppose shown that um, drones are, are very very close to I suppose um, again the, the retail experience of, of, of consumers in, in, in Ireland but also in, in Europe so they've attracted a huge amount of external investment and the most recent one which is really interesting I suppose from a transformation point of view is that Greenman who are the world's I suppose a leading food retail real estate investment manager so they invest in shopping centres and you know the, the bricks and mortar behind the food retail food sector, they have now invested in MANA. So what does that say? And they're launching it in, in Germany and launching a trial in, in this year. But it shows, I suppose, that that the digitization is, is happening and, and it's it's much closer than we think. And that um, traditional businesses are are getting on board. For others, it's very much a, re- a matter of survival. Um, the small mom and papa kind of retail stores, um, the you know like retail like bookshops. So here's a small one in South Jordan County, Tipperary. You know they were interviewed by the Irish Times. Really regretted not having invested their efforts in the shop website before the crisis unfolded. But you know now they're up online. I can buy my book through here. And I suppose one of the big things as well is that the, the Irish consumer and I, I, you know, is much more willing to to forego Amazon. And, and shop in, in a more local way online, still same line experience, but using much smaller smaller retails. And I laughed because, you know, okay, so they have their online shop, but they're also multi-channel. They're selling through through a Facebook um, uh, shop as well. So from absolutely nothing with no skills, no technology, you know, these people are still trying to make a living through, through digitization. So I suppose that's at its very, very uh, core format. Um, I suppose, what, what is enabling people or how can businesses, I suppose, um, uh, benefit from digital transformation? Again, you know, when they have no money coming in, this investment should have been made when, when times were, were better. But I suppose we're looking at, you know, really making tiny budgets go a long way. And, and, and we will look at the bigger picture and we're, I'm, I'm bringing you as far as smart cities here, so stay with me. But, you know, this is... Um, uh, Ireland is actually ranked number one in Europe for the number of SMEs selling online for e-commerce turnover and the percentage of SMEs selling online across borders. And that didn't happen by accident. Um, the local enterprise offices in Ireland um, deal with companies, micro enterprises of less than 10 employees. They have, in, they, some years ago now, they introduced a trading online voucher. Um, 
So it, it allows a, a grant of up to two and a, two and a half thousand euro um, to enable businesses to get online and get selling. And it's part of the government's national digital strategy. These vouchers have been hugely successful. They're funded at a rate of 50 percent. But um, for a period last year, that was increased to 90 percent and companies were allowed or businesses were allowed to avail of two vouchers. Um, so it was hugely transformation and it helped businesses like the Hanson Burger and the bookshop and thousands of others to get online quickly. The issue now is that they're online, but it's very their their expertise um, in terms of digital marketing, you know, search engine optimization, all the other things that they need is is only beginning to build. This type of scheme um, is also applied through Enterprise Ireland, who had a, a similar fund, but up to fifty thousand euro for 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 larger companies, the companies of ten plus, and a lot of retailers, traditional retailers, particularly department store type of retailers and um, some large chemist groups on a regional basis all availed of that funding so um, in fairness the government have been forthcoming in providing supports to help companies I suppose accelerate their their on their digitization through through online sales <clears throat> excuse me oops no I don't show you that um <clears throat> Just a few other little things that were happening, I suppose, that, that I thought were very, very interesting. Um, the whole area of collaboration um, in, in the digital world and how that opened up new opportunities. And one new business model, I suppose, that, that, that struck me and I followed its progress from about October of last year was Shop in Ireland. It started off as a Facebook page. A lady who was, um, you know, furlong, she was out of work. Um, started a truth venable she started a, a facebook group to help online businesses advertise their products online and suddenly it was amazing it literally um you know so these were a lot of craft businesses and um, gift businesses um very small one two people operations um so quickly she massed up to two hundred thousand facebook um, um a tribe i suppose if you like in the facebook group and and, and um tens and tens of uh, of suppliers who were using facebook to connect and 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 then direct people to their to their own individual websites um she has now developed that since october um to to be a, a, a shop in ireland website a, a portal which she um is is marketing as ireland's only online marketplace for buying irish and that's a beautiful use of of niche marketing and spotting an opportunity. So again, as opposed to going through Etsy or maybe some of the other larger, um, there's one in the UK, not on the high street, you know, quirky gifts and um, interesting and uh, interesting um, opportunities. So from nothing, a port, a new online portal, shopping portal was developed. She created a job for herself, her sister and the web developer. So for me, that's 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 good transformation in, in a pandemic. Um, so I suppose just leaving I suppose some of the SME examples behind for for now, um, I suppose I I, I wanted to, to 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 touch on you know what does digital transformation look like? Another aspect obviously is working and learning from home is definitely here to stay. Um, so from you know commuter to kitchen table, even for this lecture, my two children are locked somewhere. The dog is locked somewhere. Else. My husband is somewhere. Else they're all quiet so look we all we all are living it working and, and learning from home is, is, is has been you know thrust upon us and it's not easy but interestingly this week the government the of Radcliffe published the national Ro remote working strategy um, and this is um i suppose allowing employers and allowing um employees to choose digital or remote first and um I suppose encouraging employers to respond to that by providing the, the, the tools that are needed to work from home. Um, from a regional development perspective, this is really interesting because the fact that that the person is allowed to work in their place is the important part. It's not about being in your house. And many, many people are looking for a blend of a hub and a home, so a co-working hub and and some time at, at, at home so there's some some interesting um as things happening in this regard um at the, at the moment um it, as i said there's huge implications for regional development so hubs whether they be digital innovation hubs 
or you know a, a small co-working hub in a village have a vital role to play in terms of connecting people the whole sociability part of some of some of us are missing dreadfully um and and certainly a blended solution is is is, is um you know seen as as as, as a as, as, as the way to go for, for many. Um, I, one of my clients is the National Association of Community Enterprise Centres, and this, this is 120 enterprise centres spread across nine regions in, in Ireland. And altogether, there's over five and a half thousand people working in these hubs. This is pre COVID. Each of them has a small co working hub where I can go in and rent a desk or rent a small office for a period. Very flexible um, as, as I need it, etc. Um, so they are doing very interesting work in, in digitizing. They are speaking with the major providers. Obviously, the national broadband plan is, isn't happening quickly enough um, to allow real digitization. Um, so it's interesting to see that that will be accelerated as part of the remote working strategy. But um, you know, this is only a, this is this is only the beginning of, of this. Um, to mention as well, and and, and Zora and Marcus. Marcus and I have been delving deep, I suppose, into the um, regional action plans for each region, um, particularly those that we've worked on in recent days. Um, and these are nine plans that are shaping policy, um, but policy that will feed down for, for you know, community benefit. And a key theme of this is very much it's catch up to digitization, putting in place the infrastructure, um, that will help, I suppose, communities and um, um, you know uh, people, um, uh, businesses digitize. So it's a key theme. Um, Gov.ie is a really interesting. Um, it's sad, really. I enjoy all these things, but there's a huge amount of um, resources on Gov.ie in terms of this area that would be, you know, for further reading would be really interesting. Um, Zora and Marcus and the team in IVI, et cetera, are, you know, are, are experts in, 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 in I suppose the digital transformation applied through smart cities. Smart cities have been around for quite a while um, and very well understood in terms of policy, et cetera. Ireland has been slow in getting on board, I suppose, but I think, you know, there certainly are very encouraging signs that the smart city is, you know, being, um, being taken on board. Interestingly, I suppose some of the work that I'm doing with some cities is around the whole area of donut economics. So the, you know, that you have a a, a very small um, concentration of all the things that you need in within your city. This whole area of placemaking. Um, so it's 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 a really interesting interesting area. But I, I'm I'm going to leave that to the experts such as Marcus, and I'm going to share with you my experiences of smart villages and once again this very much came from a European perspective so you know we, we look to Europe a lot for transfer of innovation um, so smart villages or villages of future typically are community-led but they're they're from the grassroots as opposed to as well smart cities would be you know policymakers and and local authorities etc you know master planning and making big plans smart villages are much more about a community coming to the fore and empowering empowering them to overcome a digital divide um and negating i suppose this this you know urban rural um uh, disadvantage myth i suppose or not a myth it's reality i suppose to to improving connectivity um so you know Countries around Europe and I suppose in Ireland as well, where we have some interesting examples, um, are, are exploring ideas and initiatives around revitalizing rural services through digital and social innovation. Notice digital is not left on its own. Digital married with a social um, cause or a, a addressing social challenge is, is, is really, I suppose, for, for, for me, impact can happen. An example of this would be um, Mohol in County Leitrim, um, a small town that absolutely decimated in terms of employment, um, lack of opportunity, um, you know, uh, really, really uh, weak retail infrastructure. And they have, um, I suppose, re, um, reinventing themselves as a smart green village. Um, a lot of, um, you know, uh, climate change, 
um, uh, measures are being imp implemented that are smart, that will, will help the overall, both the local authority, but also the homeowner. And um, there is a smart co-working hub. So to, bit by bit, they're putting together the components of what will be a, a smart village. Um, so the rural services, it, it spans everything from health, so e-health, social services, education, very much about education in the community. Um, and I'm going to mention this a little bit later on. It's really important. Energy on a, you know, on a district basis, transport, retail, all improved um, by, you know, and made more sustainable through the use of, of ICT and digitization. Um, I, I mentioned the, you know, a lot, of, a, a lot of smart villages are are looking at um, the the rise of remote working and working from home as an opportunity for them. I suppose to address brain brain drain and bring you know people you know back in into the heart of communities um, and most businesses have had to reform work policies to allow employees to work outside the office um, and just some st statistics it seems you know it is working um, you know up to 16% more productive than their in office cohorts and interestingly you know happier. And this is what I suppose the quality of life issue that digitization can afford us it cannot be forgotten either. And financial gain. So, you know, up to seven thousand euro per year saving for the employer. But equally, those of us that are working from home are saving money. We're not buying lunch. We're not, you know, we're not spending. And, and this will be something I suppose economically will be interesting uh, post COVID. Um, you know, the disposable income, you know, I was going to change my car this year. I'm not changing my car this year. I'm sitting at home, you know. So um, I suppose the question is to facilitate remote working or working from home, um, you know, has digital trans transformation kept up? And, you know, what the actions to facilitate um, more remote working. Um, so just an example of I mentioned the 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 hub network um, throughout um, Ireland, um, and they were just the NASIC members. There's a lot more hubs than 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 those ones that you saw on the map. But I'm working on a project called uh, Restart Plus Restart dot How. Um, it's a European project to re regeneration project um, under Erasmus Plus. One of the case studies we have included there is obviously the Ludgate hub, um, putting you know, a small town using technology to put a small town on the map in West Cork. Um, and this is very much around the kind of the, the really cool workplace environment. Um, but, you know, it looks like a, a startup office in Silicon Valley, but it's, it, you know, it's Skibbereen in, in, in West Cork. But what Ludgate has done is that it has, you know, I suppose, um, created by people, for people as such. Um, and again, this bottom up approach, but they've done a really clever marketing of, you know, smart working, quality of life, um, you know, and selling the whole of the West Cork um, experience, I suppose, as part of come base your business, come work with us, you know, um, start your business from here or whatever. And they're hugely successful. They have hundreds of users um, and are being used as a best practice example all over Ireland. I've included some of the links to these projects in, in the slides that I will share with you afterwards. Um, and some of you are probably familiar with some of these. So, you know, when, when we get to our discussion in a little while, you can you can share with me um, your example. Interestingly, the hubs are also looking at um, alignments with the third level education to educators to allow students to come and study in this type of environment. Because again, students, workers, we, you know, it's it's not always good to be 100% at the time at home when we can get back. So um, this journey to become a smart village. So again, it was a lot of um, a lot of academic attention has been on smart cities, as I mentioned. But I was interested in this project called Smart Rural 21, which was a, a European Commission funded project um, with the overall aim of promoting and inspiring villages villages to develop and implement smart village approaches and strategies across Europe. So again, they have mapped how that journey happens. And again, I would emphasize that this is very much from a grassroots 
point of view. So it involves a lot of initiation, the context, engaging with stakeholders, engaging with the community, what are the needs, right through to designing smart solutions for those needs. So this project has actually mapped the journey of 17 European towns and villages. Yeah, I sure should have said villages and villages. We would understand it in Ireland. It would be very much in towns um, as well. And what has worked and not worked in these um, in these in these areas. So um, they've all just created this roadmap, and each of those those um, you know steps on the roadmap have the examples given. Um, and it's you know it's it's it, it's it's a really interesting example. In Ireland, we don't have enough of this content as yet, or enough of these experiences, I suppose. But I would love to see us, us getting there, and something momentum is, is certainly working to to do and highlight. Um, so you can imagine a smart village or a smart town, but where you know in isolation, that's not going to create great transformation or revitalization uh, in, in terms of regional development. And this is where regional ecosystems are coming to the fore. So for example, um, one of the projects, and you may have covered this earlier, but you know, work of Minut and IBI team to build Irish pilot regions into major EU projects. And I was, I was really encouraged that Minut um, through Marcus and Zora reached out to Leitrim um, a, a great passion. I've mentioned it a few times now. I'm not from Leitrim, but I do a lot of work in our, our businesses based there. But it's an amazing county as a, as a test bed for absolute um, oh, ingenuity and, you know, um, overcoming challenge. And they wrote um, uh, Leitrim into um, a project, the digital service that Leitrim would be work operational as a digital service fusion hub to boost vibrant rural food and tourism economies. Um, and similarly mapped how that would happen. Um, and again, that, that journey towards funding is still ongoing, but it's interesting, you know, that Leitrim was going to be used as a pilot test, it was up to two million available to invest in Leitrim. Um, and, and, you know, that particular one was not to be, but we're not finished on that journey. We will find that money to use um, to, 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 I suppose, digitize. And this is where I'm coming from, is that digitization cannot happen in a vacuum. It cannot happen in the academic halls of, of Maluti University. It needs to be connected to people and place. And that's where, I suppose, um, discussions like this and even bringing me into to things like this, I think, is, is very, very encouraging. Um, an example of, of a regional ecosystem that I'm working on at the moment, and it's so interesting, it's called Empower Eco. It is a um, the, Ireland's first um, climate action, sustainability, eco-innovation network um, cluster, I suppose, developing in the Midlands region. So the Midlands being uh, the four counties of Longford, West Mead, uh, Offaly and Leash. And this is the region that has been most affected uh, through um, the decarbonisation, I suppose, the closure of the bogs and the power generating um, facilities of the ESB in the Midlands, all gone now. So um, we are looking at using hubs. So each of the uh, of the headings that you see there is either a hub or an educator, um, and connecting all those into into one cluster. And I just on on the uh, on the other side of the slide, I highlighted why clusters matter, and this is taken from a European Observatory um, um, study that showed that that the companies within um, a cluster. So if you can imagine my food, my companies in in Offaly here. Typically, the employees if of that cluster can earn 13.5% higher average wage, um, and that wage is growing faster um, every year. Um, there's higher employment level growth rate um, in clusters than in non-cluster areas. Um, most importantly, within the cluster, there's 143% more global frontier firms, which means clusters allow companies, well, to attract more outward looking companies and those that are more ambitious, which is amazing. And companies come to an ecosystem to establish because, you know, for many different reasons, um, you know, for um, uh, cooperation, access to education, access most importantly to a talent pool. So, you know, the graduates of, um, and actually Minuth University are a partner in this in this project. So the, the graduates of 
Maynooth IT, A AIT in this region have an opportunity because of the, the more outward looking firms that will establish to have better quality job opportunities. Um, firms are growing faster, so 77% more high growth firms in a, in a cluster and um, the smart, the start, startup. The smart startups, the startups actually grow more rapidly, and, and the European Observatory tells us that, that is up to 141%. That is powerful, and that is collaboration in action. And I suppose that's what we're trying to do through some of the interesting um, projects that we're working on. And very kindly, again, Marcus and Zora allowed um, this Empower Eco, which is a CLG company, it's a not for profit. Um, company, but they allowed them to be a full partner in, in a recent application. Um, and this project has been founded by a mixture of state agencies, local authorities and industry. So the, the, the quadruple helix, if you'll, and community also, so the four areas have come together to put the Midlands, I suppose, in a higher place through developing a regional ecosystem. Um, I suppose for me, the digital divide is something we need to talk more about, and I feel it's really real. Um, you know, in, in if you just look at the studies, Ireland ranks rank sixth in Europe for digitisation. Well, do you know, you say, God, we're doing well, aren't we? This is this is going, this is we're doing that well. Um, you know, and and that study tells us it's the EU digital economy and. Index 2018 that the progress has been made in terms of connectivity, internet use for activities such as online transactions and communications, advanced and basic digital skills. Question mark for me on that one. Digital public services and integration of digital technology in business. So here we are in, you know, sixth place in, in an EU ranking. But on the other side, um, you know, a headline in the Irish Times last year jumped out at me. Oh, sorry. I let, jumped out at me was that you know half of Irish adults lack the digital skills to needed to complete in the workplace. I, I let the cat out of the bag there a minute ago. It's like this headline is 1990. It was from last year. So how can those two be? Um, you know how, how do they? Um, you know speak to each other. So um, I put the link to that article in 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 here. So again, the power of digitization in transformation cannot leave behind people and I'm talking about people of all abilities um, so whether it be seniors who are now struggling because they cannot get an appointment with their doctor you know to be maybe using some e-health solutions to um, you know farmers going to have to sell online online marts so you see you know family members sitting with the older generation you know Trans this is their lives being transacted online, you know, and they would, didn't even have a smartphone before. So it's, it's absolutely huge. So the, the digital skill levels of, of, of Irish adults um, is something that, that concerns me um, and something needs to be addressed. Um, and so we're trying to help. So just as an example, I mentioned that Momentum is, is a vocational education trainer and we get involved in EU projects to transfer innovation and to develop uh, programs, I suppose, that can be used to tackle some of the, the issues that we find. So for us, I suppose, ed ed community education can be really important in areas such as digital education or di digital skills. Um, so we, we devised a project called discoverdigital.eu. It's funded through Erasmus Plus, and it is a project which increases the digital teaching skills of community-based digital educators. Because what we found was the adult educators' digital skills themselves were really poor. They were not um, they were not at a level through which they could empower others. So we felt that an inter intervention at that level was very, very important. And we, we devised a, a, digi a Discover digital toolkit, which is an interactive innovative toolkit, which has, um, I suppose, we've taken 20 of the best digital tools that community adult educators could use and assessed them. And then they're, they're introduced to these tools um, in terms of an applied way of how they can benefit from them. So that project is ongoing. The resources are, are being finalized. We, we have until September to complete it. But it shows you, you know, I suppose some of the things that we're doing, we're speaking at policy level with, with you know, with, with a lot of the um, with policymakers, but also trying to fix things as we go. I told you that we we, we dig while, while we move. 
Um, and just another one, I suppose, um, using the power of digital in the whole area of social innovation. So social innovation being, you know, uh, fixing things that we see wrong and businesses and projects emerging that will, will um, you know, solve something. For example, Food Cloud would be Ireland's uh, absolutely shining star example of a business that was established to, to um, you know, solve a problem, which would, in this case, was food waste, and developed a, a, a digital um, solution to that. And that was started by two young women. So we want a whole new generation and more of, of that to happen. So this is a, a project which um, aims to empower young people to become confident social innovators, making the most of the digital technology available to them because if I have left school early or you know I might not have the benefit of, of a wider digital education but what we find is that 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 young people have you know may, may have amazing gaming tools and don't I suppose don't see the opportunity to apply those skills to other areas of their lives and and, and help them to 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 progress so I suppose that's just some of the an example of of, of just some of the things that we get involved in a, on a on a on a uh, on a daily basis um and i suppose just that digital divide is real you know um we all struggle with i, I saw my my thing came up there a few minutes ago bad quality network i'm as good as i can get in my in my area of rural galway but um you know we're currently ranking 11th in europe for connectivity and six percent of rural homes have no access to any fixed broadband connection at all national broadband pan hugely controversial um but it is happening it just needs to happen faster um so uh, you know i suppose it's 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 as much about and i suppose I, i'm trying to articulate it here is that issue of connectivity will have a bearing on our ability to continue to improve many other aspects of digitization or transformation i suppose as does our performance regarding human capital which is our and you know that you know, basic and advanced digital skills. Um, so it's something I suppose I just kind of the opportunity to highlight it is like, you know, we should try not to leave people behind as, as we move through 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 this. So that's me. Um, I hope that has been of relevance to you, of interest to you. And I, I very much invite any questions that you have or are open up to the discussion. Um, that would be great. Just stop yeah. sharing. Okay. Thanks very much, Orla, for the nice presentation. And it was really interesting, the numbers and the facts about the Ireland and about the digital transformation. And we will see if we have any immediate question. Do we have any to the students? OK, I cannot see any raised hand. Then um, I would like just to ask Marcus about the impacts of the digital transformation on the business models, because this has been the topic that we have been talking. I know that uh, Orla was talking about the, the general approach that we have been putting in the proposal related to connect, engage and empower, but also in the proposals we have been thinking that how this digital transformation is going to impact on different aspects of the any business, considering that these three uh, main activity that we have been con considering in the proposal. And also uh, that's that's to open the discussion between us. And also the question to Orla would be that um, I know that you have been explaining, but we have been putting this approach um, into the different proposals we have been working with. And uh, maybe also it would be great if we could see that how this uh, three different stages have been influencing the uh, digital transformation and also how it has been incorporating the uh, strategies and policies and regional plans into the proposals. These are two main questions to Marcus and you, and we could discuss about that because that's the topic for the lecture. Thank you. Okay. Um, th th thanks, sorry for, for the question, but also more, more important, thanks uh, all are for sharing um, um, the, the insights around this and also particularly the regional aspects. And um, as you said, like uh, we need to increase a little bit the pace on digitalization in Ireland. 
um, and and all over Europe. Uh, like I'm, I don't know, I'm from Germany. I think they're also lacking behind it. Um, so it's not only an Irish problem, but it's I think um, uh, we really need to increase the pace and at least like it's 2021, and we're talking about that the connectivity is poor, like just basic things like kind of what we would expect that that says that we actually can connect that basically on a higher on a on the next layer of that we're thinking about applications how we can change things how we can improve processes uh, and then i uh, saw your question was around the business models so we should focus our attention to thinking about so how can we reconfigure or change the business models to make that more valuable if you're talking about sustainability if you're talking about also putting Europe into um, uh, c competing with the rest of the world and all this. So I think that's where we should put our attention to it and not that we are occupied with kind of broadband um, uh, infrastructure questions because technically they're solved, that just need to be done. And it can't be um, the, like that's now, it can't be just the investment that that's the problem if there are so much opportunity with digitalization what we're all saying and what all the indications are around it that should that should be the investment so um, to me the business models that we will see over the next couple of years significant changes in 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 companies and how they work together so and and even how the what the role in these different companies is so um i had first kind of when you asked the question so i had the kind of the the retail in mind so but i think that's an obvious one where we at the moment see in particular with the covid crisis where we see how the business model changes so they're at least becoming semi uh, offline at least so they do and and all you had some examples with the food company around it so they're very innovative they change something but i also tried to get another example which companies which you recently discussed and in the broad context of mobility and car manufacturers so um and also they, they're facing a significant change in not only e-cars but also how mobility is done and how basically so the ownership of cars so basically that maybe not everyone has, and we see that already, younger generation, that not everyone has maybe a car. That is more car sharing, mobility as a service type of model, where basically, um, um, so the prestige object of, of a car is not there anymore. It's just more the mobility which is important. And then basically the combination with, between individual transportation, of course, I don't want to uh, lose my flexibility that I just go out of the door and drive uh, or, or go somewhere. I want to have that, but if they come up with that concept and then integrating that with public um, transportation, we see a completely different way of, of mobility. And I think that's what we need to think about, that whole sectors changing, whole ecosystems, how value chains, and Ola, you had some really good examples in your presentation about the food, the food value changing, and, and then basically we have regions which are very sustainability. Uh, sustainable. So I think this is this is what we are facing, and that's what the interesting thing is about it. So I, I leave it to that. So so you you pointed around the the kind of the business model. So but yeah. So I think this is a fantastic topic. Like yeah. Thanks very much, Marcus and Orla. What do you think about these three um, steps of connect, engage, and empower? Absolutely. Um, without doubt, I think you know the the connect peace and and that um is really important because i think you know um and has been accelerated because of of covid because we've never been less connected if you like we took connections for granted and um, so very much i suppose connecting but we're talking about connecting across um from policy makers and, and when i say policy makers i mean funders you know i mean enterprise ireland i mean people with checkbooks or, or sorry digital currency now or whatever um you know they need to be part of of the um of of that understanding of and that connection better better i suppose better opportunities for for connection and how how how, how that, that can lead lead to change um i suppose and then you know it is a step by step process it's not but again mostly in terms of regional regional uh, transformation it's not linear there's no one there's no um you know, straight line solution. So I suppose it's um, you know following on with the other two two steps. I know I know Marcus. You know we're talking. You you mentioned about you know that the, 
you know, it's not just, it can't, we can't keep talking, you know, it's not all about connectivity or whatever, um, you know, that we can't keep talking, we just need to spend the money to do it. And money has been an issue. You know, we came out of the worst recession we had, we had no money. Then we got, you know, we were doing nicely and now we're back to having no money. But there is an appetite for investment now, which we didn't have um, post Celtic Tiger uh, recession. So I suppose the wider economic um, environment is, is very, very important. But I've seen how clustering and how, um, you know, connection and bringing those two can make such a transformational um, difference. Um, so I think absolutely it's, it's it's very worthy and and um should be applied in a more um, intense way i think is the best way to put it yeah yeah thanks very much orla and marcus i have a question because you have been looking these three different faces in the proposals generally some type of intertwined type of faces it means that they are we are going to have all these connect, engage and empower all together, all across the road and all across this journey. Could you just let us know how it goes and how this could be defined as intertwined activities and steps? Yes, and maybe the focus should be on the empower phase. Basically, I think this is the really important one. So um, uh, connecting different services and making them visible. I think that we can do that. So we have platforms where you can even um, connect different service platforms together technically, but also like I think um, in, in a way of knowing the right people, bringing them in, into the connect uh, around this. Then the enabling one is I think already a di uh, more difficult one. So for example, technology adoption is a is a big part. And um, like when we talk to particular smaller companies, for example, like of course they use the word artificial intelligence and also virtual reality, but what the opportunities with all of this is and what the details and how to implement this and how to use this uh, is extremely difficult already. And um, like it's not done basically just kind of taking a prediction model from a, a service provider and trying to customize that so it needs to fit into the organization. So um, uh, enabling actually to avail of these opportunities. So that's how I would describe that. So this is already a big step, uh, particularly for smaller companies, but also for, for bigger ones. We, we're talking with them as well, how, how we can customize and, and adopt uh, artificial intelligence, for example. And then it becomes really interesting when we try to uh, change the capabilities and the uh, view how companies see the opportunity and how they work together. Uh, and I think that's a big change. There's a cultural change in the organization that innovation, for example, becomes more important in, in, in the companies uh, that they also see maybe it's not uh, like they have a valuable service. They want to market that in a European context uh, around this. And so there's a lot of things what actually changes in, in companies, how they see their position and, and, and what they can do around it. And I would call that as somewhere helping um, empowering the, the people in there so there's a lot of people element culture uh, around it um, and, and this is a really difficult one to make that that shift uh, around it that particular for small companies in that region and that they see actually when they collaborate together they achieve much more than individually thanks very much marcus for the details and just it's necessary to mention that we are uh, working on another european project in which we are very concentrated on retail and uh, some type of transformation all across the retail in many different european countries and uh, marcus you have been talking about different technologies that's really interesting because we have been reviewing some examples uh, over the previous session today um, and thinking that different companies are using different uh, disruptive technologies to implement some changes in the companies. And also I know that uh, related to the retail domain, we have been uh, some research in terms of um, use of technology over different phases. And uh, this fact that different technologies might be applicable to specific phases, not to all of them. 
And do you have any uh, comment on this? Do you have any suggestions for our students if they would like to go for some specific technology and disruptive technology for their own businesses? That's a very broad answer, so probably a uh, question. So probably would have a, a good answer for this. Uh, the, um, like I, I, I could uh, really consult uh, or offer consulting service around this. So, but it's a really to me, it's more like not basically that we have a template. Okay, technology A is for this. Technology is more like basically to fit the technology to the challenge around it, or to the I would call them transformation paths on the end. So basically to look at the context to the, 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 the even what the company wants to achieve and then designing together with the company um, uh, the right technology and that maybe it's a technology mix uh, around it and we see that in the retail as well so it's not just virtual reality it's virtual reality in the context of, of um, analytics understanding people on the end understanding the customer behavior so it's not an answer basically these are the two uh, technologies which which would be favored or prioritized around this. So I think it's really kind of more the understanding and I would like the technology adoption. I think this maybe for, for your students might be an important thing to really have a good understanding and awareness of technology adoption because there will be new technologies coming. Like we don't know what yet, but it will come. Yeah, I don't know if all of, if, you, if you see that as well from, from the companies you're working with, that technology adoption is an important one. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at a AI. Um, I have a new project starting, which is, you know, blockchain for startups. Um, so, but but it, it, it's the adoption piece is, is hard because I think it has to, if, if you're coming from a non-technical background, that it has to be made very accessible. And I think the accessibility and the inclusion, I suppose, of, of um, or increasing the inclusion, inclusivity of, of technologies that it can be used by all is, is something I feel quite strongly about, um, you know, that, that we're not being, that we're making it easier for, for, particularly for people in business, because there's so many other demanding challenges. Technology, there's a fear, there's, you know, and, and obviously you're, you're at the top of your game, but it's, it's, it's the others that I would, would really worry in that adop adoption piece, absolutely critical yeah 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 i don't have the solution uh, but i think it needs to be part of you know there's almost a brokerage or you mentioned there you know like it's almost like a consultancy there's a brokerage to be done there, there's a mentorship there's a there's a, a, a piece missing to get the technology to to the to the um to the user in a in a in a um, I suppose very efficient and, and effective and cost effective as well as everything the type cost time everything you know that it happens seem as, as easy as possible yeah thank you for the quid for the answer and this question is from the fact that we have been talking about benefit realization from IT as Marcus mentioned we cannot prescribe any specific technology for any specific challenge it should be exactly tailorized to the challenge and see which technology or which IT service is going to be uh, beneficial to any specific uh, business and that is very important. Not all the technologies, not all the dis disruptive techn technologies are supposed to be used by all businesses. As you have seen the participants in the examples that we have been talking, those examples they have been saying that we have been using this type of technology like AI and we have been making these changes in our biz business and they have been defining a strategy for their the digital transformation. And based on that, they have been using specific technology and made some changes. And now I was thinking uh, about this question, Orla, if you have any recommendation for our participants, if they would like to have their own uh, startup or if they want to have uh, some changes in their business, how you're going to suggest them, what type of document, what type of things they need to have a look from the policy perspective or from future plans perspective? Do you have yes, uh, yeah, and I think Marcus um, mentioned it just earlier. It's it's the blend of technology. It's how technology is a solution and work back to what piece, what, what are the ingredients? So I need, 
AI plus analytics plus VR. I told you I'm not, I'm not taking, you know, but but it's 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 great bundling these into solutions um, that are accessible is is the opportunity that there is, um, you know. It's it's it's. Um, I, I I think I find that 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 um, the challenge is that that the solutions are currently quite singular. I can do, you know, I can in, you know, if I'm a tourism business, I can, um, you know, implement a, a virtual reality, stroke augmented reality experience for the visitor when they come to my website, you know, when they're looking to see whether they're going to book me, book through or whatever. But, you know, and then you know, I have to do my data analytics in a separate function or a separate piece, which then informs my business planning, my, you know, my, my, um, the whole of my business model but i think everything needs to come together much more um seamlessly or into into solutions and i feel that um smes certainly don't have the um advisors or the uh you know the enablers of of how that can happen what is right for them and um, that is certainly a gap and i think there's a huge opportunity i know certainly in the consulting world anybody that does that type of work is extremely busy and um, so there's going to be a huge opportunity for more enablers and um, these these people that will translate technology into solutions multifaceted multifaceted um solutions um so that's that's really i suppose from my perspective it's just companies are are, are struggling businesses are struggling but equally so are the policy makers they don't have these skills they don't know about the power of technology and i think that's what you know your marcus and, and yourself so have, have opened their eyes in some of the local authorities and some of the regional development planning people as to what can be done if we collaborate mm -hmm. um so it's back to your three-step um uh, approach you know so um yeah but i think certainly um i'd be highlighting the opportunities from a from a lots of consultancy enablers um that will help help bridge and make this change happen thanks orla and by this i was thinking that this is exactly the idea for having the ivi digital innovation hub and by this, it, it has been the inspiring idea. This is the place where SMEs, the local SMEs can come to this hub and just take some benefit, advisory benefit. And Marcus, if you like to talk a little bit about the idea behind the IVI Digital Innovation Hub and the fact that by this, we are going to help the SMEs in the region with this. Yeah, so but, but maybe it's more important to basically also how we position and, and what IVI basically like last time we talked about IVI and kind of uh, so as a so backbone we have of course the IT capability maturity framework which are still relevant capabilities in this but I think the, it's also changing around these sectors and that's what you mean by kind of when we help with uh, SMEs around it so to me uh, kind of a cluster a sectorial approach and, and local ecosystem system approach is extremely important. So bringing the right stakeholders, the right players together, so SMEs, maybe policy makers, but also public sector like county councils, also maybe the funding bodies who can change something. So to really make a local, vibrant, sustainable ecosystem in maybe fintech, in maybe retail, in maybe food and so on in the different sectors. And I think this, this is important to me. And what IVI, what we're trying to do there, is really forming these clusters, these people working together, co-creating digital transformation paths, so ways forward how a whole local ecosystem can change, it can transform around it. And I think this this is important kind of that they, they, they co-create, that they innovate, that they think about what technology can do. So, and I describe it exactly in that way. So technology is an opportunity which we can take or not, <laughs> uh, but we need to find the way of how to make that really to maximize that impact or the change what that technology can do. And and this is not so easy. Like it sounds easy to bring a few people together in that way, yeah. but to co-create, okay. to to, to do that is really difficult. Like otherwise people would do that already if it's easy, <laughs> but that's what, what IVI does basically. Thank you. 
Thanks very much for the answer, Marcus, and to Orla. Thanks very much to both of you for the interesting discussion around the topic for digital transformation. And then I would like to open the floor to the questions, if there are any from our participants. Do we have any question? OK, I think there has been a lot of uh, interesting topics and discussion over this session. Thanks very much. I would like to hand over to you and saying thanks to you to accept our invitation and to join us for today's session. Thanks very much, uh, Orla, and thanks very much, Marcus. Yeah. Can I can please. I have, can sure. I have one one fun thing? So first of all, I think Orla, I, I really like the presentation and kind of how I you position so. that in the in the regional thing, uh, world. Like yeah, and. And also, I think for the students, digital transformation, and that's what we just discussed, it won't go away. It will be very, very important for the next couple of years. So you better get familiar with all of this and, and kind of also um, uh, position it in, 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 in something like this, because it's not just about yet, a, yet another technology. It's about making that work for this and, and shaping, uh, transforming basically organization in that way, in that ecosystem, because that will, will actually happen basically the next couple of years. Thanks very much, Marcus. And uh, Orla, do we have any uh, the, the last suggestion, recommendation? No, I think just building on exactly what you said, I think that the career opportunities are absolutely remarkable in this area. You, you've chosen very well. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's very exciting to see, you know, that, that the technology is now being married within the applicability of, of, of regions, etc. Um, so yeah, well done and thank you for, for inviting and, and thank I some my phone is beeping there. There's alerts coming through from some of the attendees to connect on LinkedIn and everything. So well done. The connections are starting already. So thank That's you. Great. Thanks very much and wish you. you a very nice day and the you weekend too. as well coming weekend. Yeah, thank uh, you. Okay. Bye for thank now. you. Bye. 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 Okay, guys, we are going to continue uh, uh, till the end of this session. And I was wondering if we have any question related to the lecture, related to any other matter for this module, because this is, as you know, this is the last day of module. And uh, also you have had a deadline for today for submitting your assignment. And do we have any question? Any point? Any suggestions to improve this module? Okay, I'm going to stop recording.